Hello, and welcome to the why and how of online captioning. I'm Sarah Murphy, and I'm here with my colleague, Sam Karstos, and we will get started momentarily. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Please don't hesitate to contact us with any questions you may have at the end of our presentation. Our contact information will be available at the end of the presentation. This is part one of a two-part video series on the why and how of online captioning. I'm going to start with a short review of terms and definitions so that we're all on the same page about what we're going to be talking about today. Today, when we talk about captions, we aren't just talking about funny images with text. We're talking about open and closed captioning that incorporate all of the elements of the audio experience. Open captions automatically appear with video and are burned in, as opposed to closed captions that can be turned on or off. Subtitles assume that the viewer can hear but cannot understand the language or the audio is not entirely clear, so the dialogue is transcribed. A transcript is a text representation of what was said. It includes sounds and additional metadata like speaker names. Once it is associated with the timing of the media, it can become captions. As there is live and on-demand television, there are also live and on-demand captions. Live captions are delivered during a live broadcast, event, or program in real time. Offline or archive captions are created after the fact and have been edited to align perfectly with the spoken word. I'm going to turn now to talk about who benefits from captions. Well, everyone benefits from captions. This is a funny chart that I found on the internet, but actually I think there's a lot of truth behind it. Captions are useful when there's background noise that makes it difficult to hear, when the volume is muted or turned down low, or if you aren't very familiar with the language. I spent some time living abroad where I was learning Spanish, which was the local language. And while most of the television programming was from the US or Canada and aired in English, it had subtitles in Spanish, so I was able to learn a lot of new vocabulary that I might not have encountered otherwise. The Gallaudet Research Institute estimated that 13% of people in the United States have some kind of hearing loss, with a large share being 65 or older. Based on numbers from 2003, about 38 million Americans are hard of hearing. That number has since gone up, as that is an older statistic, and our population has since aged. Here we have a chart of the growing population of people 65 and older over the past century with baby boomers coming of age to create the largest population of people 65 and over in our recent history, and this is compounded by people living longer. So to review the benefits of captioning. Deaf and hard of hearing population are able to access the auditory experience through captions, but captions benefit all of us. Captions help increase comprehension of learning material, they compensate for poor audio quality, background noise, or a sound sensitive environment, and search engines also benefit from captions. On average, one hour of media contains about five to 10,000 words of text, which if exposed to search engines would help in SEO. One application of captioning in the learning space is in multisensory learning, which is an instructional technique that facilitates learning through stimulating different senses at the same time. For example, seeing text while hearing the spoken word. Research on multisensory learning shows that dyslexic individuals benefit when narrated text is also highlighted or captioned as it is spoken. Our SyncWords technology provides just that in a highly accurate and scalable manner. In fact, this technology has tremendous potential for the ebooks industry. When combining the visual of the written word with the auditory experience of the spoken word, many students are able to retain information better. Research shows that an experience that stimulates both auditory and visual senses has a retention rate of 68% 72 hours later. As opposed to receiving information as only text or audio alone, subjects only remember about 10% of what was read or heard after the same time period. And when asked, 94% of MIT online students said their interactive video transcript features were useful. Now that I've covered who captions benefit, I'd like to turn to the recent upcoming laws around captioning. 
This is from Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act. Section 508 is a fairly broad law that requires all federal electronic and information technology to be accessible to everyone. This means that video must be closed captioned. Section 504 applies to any agency or program that receives federal funding, and under this law, they cannot discriminate against individuals with disabilities, so there must be equal access to any program or activity that receives federal subsidy. Web-based communications for educational institutions and government agencies are covered by this law as well. The 21st Century Video and Communications Accessibility Act, also known as CVAA, expands closed captioning requirements for all online video that previously aired on television. In January 2012, the FCC adopted rules requiring captioning programs shown on TV to be captioned when re-shown on the internet. These rules implement provisions of the CVAA of 2010. The CVAA follows a string of laws passed in the 80s and 90s that were designed to ensure that telephone and television services would be ac accessible to all Americans. But these laws were not able to keep up with the fast-paced technological changes that our society has witnessed over the past decade. The new law contains groundbreaking protections to enable people with disabilities to access broadband, digital, and mobile innovations, the emerging 21st century technologies for which the act is named. The CVAA is divided into two broad titles or sections. This is an overview of what each title covers. There are a series of deadlines past and future set out to get television content with captions available online under an aggressive timeline. So we're just going to take a quick look at those dates here. Near live video programming is defined as programming that is performed and recorded less than 24 hours before being shown on TV for the first time. Edited for internet means the TV version has been substantially edited, for example, deleting scenes or altering music scores. However, changing the number or duration of commercials is not considered editing for this purpose. These new rules cover full-length video programming. Video clips and outtakes are not required to be captioned when shown on the internet. Consumer-generated media shown on the internet is not required to be captioned unless it's been shown on television with captions. The phasing in of these requirements is timely, considering the growing audience for online video content. In February of this year, the digital monitoring firm Comscore released its online video rankings, noting that 178 million Americans watched 33 billion online videos. Here we have a pie chart of the predictions of online video bandwidth for 2015. You can see a large portion of this chart is for on-demand video that previously aired on television. And this graph is a representation of video on-demand growth predictions through 2015. The market was at $8 billion U.S. billion as of 2012 and growing at nearly 60% over the previous year. Continued rapid growth will push the market past $20 billion by 2015 as per ABI research. That concludes part one of our two-part video series on the why and how of online captioning. Please continue to video two.